Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Hello and thank you for joining us. You are listening to Deeper, your daily Bible study. Today's lesson is titled, Humbled Before God. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, as we open your word today, let us remember that this reflects your thoughts. It communicates to us your love, your plan for our lives personally, uh, for your church as a whole, and uh, really reveals the great issues in the plan of salvation. So Lord, let us uh, come away from this study, these few minutes, uh, different than the way we began them. And we know that by your power and through the promise of your Holy Spirit, this is possible. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Centuries before Ezra and Nehemiah, God had explained through Moses the steps that would enable him to turn back Israel's curses of captivity and apostasy. You know, the promises given to Moses and the Israelites back then and the steps necessary for them to once again experience God's full blessing, those steps are no different than the counsel given to God's church today. So once again, we're going to begin today by looking at the history and seeing God's counsel then, and then we'll be comparing it to God's counsel uh, for his church today. David, let's start in Deuteronomy chapter 30, the first three verses here. We're going to be looking at God's uh, promise that he gives in this passage here. I'm there, and it says, And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessings and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all nations, whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. Okay, uh, so let's just start with a few easy questions here. What does God promise that he uh, will do for his people uh, if and when the time comes that they are scattered among all the nations? Well, a blessing and a beautiful promise is that he will bring them back. He will gather them from all the nations where the Lord hath scattered them. So he will bring them back together to, to, to the place. And... Uh, so the, the promise is that the time would come when even though they're living comfortably in Babylon and other places and they have no intention of leaving, he'll just come through with his angels and sweep them up and, and uh, just drag them back to Jerusalem. Yeah, and force them. For, for salvation upon them, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what some people think today. You know, God will force himself upon me. He will save me no matter what I do. Well, that's just wrong. Of course, it's not the case. If we had the video cameras running... Uh, all of you listening could tell that we're, of course, being um, facetious here. Uh, God, as, as you said, David, God will never force salvation on anybody. There is a condition to this promise, and it's, it's here in what we read. Um, and thou shalt, verse 2, Thou shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, and it's what kind of obedience is it? You know, is it the checklist type of obedience? Well, look, I'm doing all of this stuff. I, I don't really, what, my heart's not in it. Of course not. At the end of verse two, it says that um, he's looking for people that will do this with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Mm -hmm. And then he says in verse three, then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee. And then he will return and gather thee from the nations. We're looking at conversion here, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Total repentance, uh, a total realization that there's nothing in myself that uh, can save me. I absolutely need to humble myself before God. That'd be a good good title for today's lesson, David, humbled before God. And um, at that point, now he can work to gather his people. Absolutely. And and Tim, this is you know what happened at the time of Ezra and Nehemiah. Uh, when they 
those again these were those that chose to humble themselves before the lord the lord brought them back to the mind to their to their to their to their understanding that he wanted them not in babylon but he wanted them out of babylon into the promised land in the land where he had given them an inheritance and the very a very small group at first very small group only 50,000 people basically out of millions decided to go back follow the lord and the lord opened you know what seemed impossible you know odds and it, it almost seemed you know that it was against them to be able to even make it back the lord brought them through his hand he protected them brought them back to the, the land of israel and established them this is exactly what was fulfilled this promise you know but it happened as we mentioned as we're talking about to those that were converted to turn their hearts that were willing to give up their lavish lifestyles their successful businesses their homes their you know their life type of experience lifestyle there in babylon and going to the unknown but return because it was god's purpose god's word and this is what will happen today too you know we will seek those that are seeking the lord with all their hearts the lord will give them a path in their lives that it might not seem popular it might not seem that it makes sense but as you follow that path god says uh you know will open doors and will give you the 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 blessing to know that you are walking with him you know david there's a question just as i'm looking at the notes here and listening to what you're saying, there's a question that's coming to my mind. Why is it that this humility is so important? Um, hmm. You know, as God is speaking to the, to the through Moses to the Israelites way back here at Sinai or at, in the desert, you know, why does he require this humility first before he works? He, he certainly could do it any way he wishes. And, uh, you know, he's a God of love. You know, even when... I'm not in a condition where uh, I'm allowing him to work. I believe he would still wants to do this. So why why can't he or why doesn't he? And uh, there may be a number of good answers for this question. The one that came to my mind here is that God knows that it would actually be dangerous for us were we to uh, experience success or uh, to have blessings in our lives when we're not in the position to give glory to God, we would actually end up in a more dangerous spiritual place than we were before he worked uh, if if we have not humbled ourselves before God. Hmm. I, I think, Tim, that is very, I mean, very important because, you know, one of the biggest uh, pitfalls of, of man is uh, pride, you know, and feeling that even your your good work for the Lord, uh, it's a result of your own, you know, ingenuity, maybe your skills, your, I don't know, deliverance, whatever it might be. Yet God knows that th- since we are so prone to that for self to raise, you know, he needs that humbleness or that he is a requirement, a humility. And, and this is why in a certain degree, the Lord, after you know time after time tells in the word of god you know that he seeks or he listens to those that are humble in their hearts you know they have a humble heart that they are meek and lowly heart this is really the experience that god's people you know we are to have otherwise we will most likely end up in in the as you mentioned in a worse spiritual state uh thinking that we are blessed because there is some something good in us you know and in ourselves Mm-hmm. Let's swing this now into uh, the application for today. Um, I'm sure most of our listeners are familiar with the promise in Revelation 18, verse 4, where uh, John sees an angel come from heaven with a very uh, important message. And he, he says in Revelation 18, verse 4, I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, this is come out of spiritual Babylon, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues. Well, this is a very similar promise. God is going to draw and gather his people uh, wherever they may be scattered around the world, and he's going to bring them into this saving relationship 
and this truth that will ena enable people to be prepared for his second coming. There is a requirement for uh, any of us to respond, just as there was, you know, for the, the Hebrews way back um, in the Old Testament time here. And the requirement is the same, and it's that we be humbled before God. David, I'd like to read a statement from the book Great Controversy. This is found on, well, there's two of them. The first one's on page 464, and then I'll jump to page 478. Before the final visitation of God's judgments upon the earth, there will be among the people of the Lord such a revival of primitive godliness as has not been witnessed since apostolic times. The spirit and power of God will be poured out upon his children. At that time, many will separate themselves from those churches in which the love of this world has supplanted love for God and his word. I'm just going to, it goes on, but I'll stop right there. And David, I believe everybody listening to us today wants to be part of this group. That's why we're studying the Bible. We want to be in a place where we can respond, uh, be responsive to God's leading, whether it's through the Bible uh, or through the Holy Spirit. And Tim, you know, it's I'm excited about this quote, but at the same time, I'm a little, quite frankly, I'm, I'm a little sad that we have not seen this yet, this uh, revival of primitive godliness as has not been witnessed since apostolic times. I mean, sadly, we haven't seen that yet. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I am, I pray that we see this soon because the world and even our own church, it's in desperately need of a revival. Uh, and unless we are humble first and we are humble ourselves, you know, with our whole heart, we really seek God in, in humility. We may never be part of this revival, you know, and this is a sad truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're not part of that revival, you are definitely cut off because it's, yeah. it's, it's in this is 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 a very serious thing. And I pray that you know, as we study this today, and we emphasize more this aspect that really we seek our heart, the Lord with all our hearts, and we humble ourselves before Him. Now, the, the balancing statement to this, or the second half, is on Great Controversy, page 478. Here's how it happens. Here's how this revival takes place. It is only as the law of God is restored to its rightful position that there can be a revival of primitive faith and godliness among his professed people. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways, and see, ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. David, I believe, I agree with you. We are in desperate need individually. I need it. Um, our church as a whole needs it. Uh, we need this revival. Uh, we need to have the law of God restored to its rightful position, which of course is in our minds and our hearts so that the Holy Spirit can lead us effectively. I had uh, one pastor sharing with me just a couple of weeks ago. He said, you know, <clears throat> unless the Lord comes back in the next 10 years, I'm not sure we'll have a church left. Now, some may see that as a very pessimistic view, um, but he was sharing from his heart some of the concerns that he had. Uh, here is the solution. It's to humble ourselves, allow God to um, write the principles of his law by his Holy Spirit back in our minds and hearts. And he promises, I, I will do all that is needed uh, to bring you back to me and you know, to come and get you and, and bring you home. And I look forward to that day. Absolutely. I look forward to that day too. And and to remember that God wants us to go back to his word, to the old paths, you know, the good way and walk therein. And really, this is where we'll find rest for our souls, as Jeremiah says. Amen to that. Well, we're going to have to take a rest from this broadcast until tomorrow because we have 11 seconds left. Thank you for joining us. We hope that you've been blessed by the time spent in God's Word. And uh, we encourage you to tell somebody else about this if you're enjoying it. And uh, both of you tune in tomorrow. Thank you. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. 
To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.